Hello folks, this is Margie Roy from 3dcuts.com and I'm here to do the video tutorial for my zigzag spring card. This is another card in my zigzag series that folds flat for mailing or storage and opens up to make a really nice decor item. This particular card is designed for spring holidays. Right now I have it set up as Easter. It's got a happy Easter sentiment and a card that you can put an additional sentiment, sentiment on it here as well. It could be happy spring or happy Mother's Day. It comes with the banners for both of those plus a different add-on. You can use it for any one of these holidays. The tulips is such a nice universal theme. As always, remember to go to my website and look at the tutorial there. I put information on the papers I use, the size of the pieces, and just any new hints that you need to have to do this project. That's where I keep you up to date. So just don't rely on this video tutorial. This is an easy project. It is designed to fit into a standard uh, booklet envelope so that you can mail it or store it. Let's get started. The first step is to prepare the tulips. Each tulip is made up of two sides. There is the base and petals that get added to it. And they go on both the front and the back of every tulip. On the one I made here, I did not use any outlining ink on the petals and I was a little disappointed uh, on how they blended in. I tried using some distress ink and I didn't like that. Um, but then I decided to get some silver regular ink and apply that to the edges. It gives a little sparkle to the edge and helps provide some more definition. I didn't have an applicator, so I made one out of some foam. And on all of the pieces, take a little ink and just run it along the edge. It is the edge on the petals that is important and allow those to dry. I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of these, but you're not going to have to watch. Okay, all of the petals of my tulips have been inked. I am now going to assemble them. To assemble them, I'm going to use art glitter glue. I have transferred it to this uh, container that I bought from Amazon that has a very small tip. I like using it with our, our glitter glue. Now you will notice that there are several different kinds of flowers in the cutout. Almost all of them are this shape without any dotted line in them. There are a couple that have a dotted fold line. I have two yellow ones with a dotted fold line and two pink ones. Those are the petals that go on the tulips that get folded. The others can go anywhere. These are different sizes and important. These are all of the same. So as to not get confused, I'm going to start with this one. And I will take the art glitter glue, apply it to the back side of the petal. Match it up and glue it in place. There are two sides that are bigger and they go on this bigger daffodil. This is uh, not daffodil, tulip. This is the one that goes in the back. I wonder how many times over the course of this tutorial I'm going to call these daffodils instead of tulips. I know they're tulips, so just ignore me if I call them daffodils. Okay, all of the flowers need to be glued together in exactly the same way. Just a little glue on the back of the petal. One goes on one side. And one goes on the other side. And you can see that I have a nice silvery line that helps define the edge of the petals. Not too overbearing, subtle like so. 
all of Blossom's need to have the petals glued on that way. Okay, folks, while the camera's been off, I have glued up nearly all of the tulips. I have a few observations that I want to make before I finish. First of all, I liked the silver inking on just this inside edge on both the blue and the purple. I'm not as excited about it on the pink and definitely not on the yellow. So the next time I make this card, I think I'll try a different color ink. On the yellow, I find it looks kind of dirty. And I might try a uh, gold, no, probably a, a, a darker yellow and ochre or an orangey kind of ink instead of the silver on those two, these two colors. Maybe a rose on the uh, pink ones. Needs a little more experimenting. You need two tulip blossoms for each tulip on the garden because we want this display to be double-sided. It can be used as the centerpiece in a table if it's double-sided, so you want to take the time to do that. You will need to make 28 tulips for the 14 flowers. Each tulip has one on the front and the back. There we go. I have finished all my blossoms now. Look at them. There are the two larger ones for the big pink one, and there are the two folded yellow ones for the front center one. Have to make sure I keep those separate. They have the dotted fold lines on them. And then the rest are all matching. We are going to put those to the side and move on to working with the greens now. There are four green pieces. Notice the notches. There are diamond notches and there are scalloped notches. You want these placed so that the diamond, the triangle notches are all to the left on the two large ones. And uh, these will match in with that. Now, on all of these, the stems for the tulips are not strong enough to hold up the multi-layer of the tulip blossom. So I have included in the download a number of stem supports. And on each one of these stems that does not have a fold in it, you are to glue one of the stem supports. It is to go right up through the center. These are not cut to size. They should all be a little bit long. Match them up at the top. Glue them right down the center, let them hang over the bottom, and we'll snip those off later. It's just easier than having to match identical sides. There are short ones and long ones. It does not matter if it doesn't go quite to the top. We do not put it on the one with the fold. After you have glued them in place, just take a pair of scissors and snip them off flush to the bottom edge. Repeat this on all four green pieces. We now can start adding the flowers. There's a randomness to it. I'm going to start with the tallest one, there is a dotted fold line in the center. You fold toward you on this one. This is the one that has a single notch on the left side and a single scoop on the right side, just so that you know which direction to go on these. Single triangle notch, single scoop, like so. The center of this is the big pink tulip. This is the one that's bigger than all of the others. The uh, tulip with the double score line goes on the back side, on the outside of it, and the one with a single goes on the inside. I'm working on the inside now, so I'll take this one. I am going to put scrap paper 
under here in case I spill with the glue. I will put glue. Again, I'm using art glitter glue here. I'm going to put glue on this. I have folded the blossom. It is going to go over this, lining up with the fold line, and I am going to fold around it. I don't want any of the green showing on the front, but you can see that I have made the blossom quite a bit bigger than the green support piece there. So that one will go there. Let's see. That's the only pink one on this piece. To the left of it is a blue one. And next to yellow one. To, right, to the right of the pink one is my first purple one. Now I chose to do these tulips in solid pastel colors. There's all kinds of variations you could do. I could see all of the tulips being white, use rose colored ink to distress them and make a very pretty variegated tulip. Let's see another yellow one here. Okay, there we go. Now this one can be turned over and we match them on the back side. The pink one has the fold in it. You want to glue it on folded so that the card will be able to fold once it's all dry. I think on future ones, I'm not going to put glue on the peak. It's fine if those petals at the peak do not meet. A little airspace between them would add a little dimension. So I'm just going to put glue on the green. A little bit of green showing there. I'm going to snip that out. There's the first side, put that aside to dry. Now I'm going to work on the front piece. This has the yellow one in the center and I'm going to fold it back. Let's see, notches are on the left so that I fold it back. The triangular notches are on the left. That's what I want. Now I have to locate the yellow flowers that have the dotted lines in them and fold them in half. Now this one, the double fold goes on the front. Again, I'm going to fold the piece and then place the blossom over it. Getting it well positioned in there but making sure it can fold before it dries. Okay, to the left of it is a purple one. There is no rules as to which order these flowers go in. Feel free to vary them. Turn it over and do the back side. Now we're going to work on the left end. The left end has the triangular notches out of it and it has a purple one and a blue one. left end. And the last side is the right end. The tall one's purple and the short one is pink.
Okay, we have finished adding the tulips to all of the green pieces. Now it's time to assemble. Start with the two large ones, the pink on the right, the yellow on the left, and you will slide them together. These are slot slides. There's one at each end. And you slide them down until the bottoms meet. The tips of the tulips do get caught on each other, so look for that and find what's catching and preventing them from sliding into place. Make sure that they fold. It does. I am now going to tape those in place. Take some non-glare scotch tape, cut off about a quarter of an inch, and tape this seam in place right at the bottom. And do the same on the other slot. I'm going to do the same near the top as well. You'll find that this really stiffens up the construction and isn't at all visible. And then turn it over and repeat on the other side. sure that it flattens and it does and opens up again good now the left side is the side again with the little triangular notches open it so the left side is facing you find the side with the matching triangular notches and fold the little tabs in at the end they are dotted score lines open them up and take half inch score tape and apply that to each tab. Peel the score tape off one. The double notches go to the double notch side. You line up the end and the bottom, and you adhere it right there. It should match up fairly closely to the other end. Peel the score tape there. And adhere that in place as well. That, type, that way of attaching it will assure that it opens and folds flat. Now, fold it over to the side with the scalloped notches out. Take the other end and repeat. Fold over the two ends. Apply score tape to the outside of both of them. Peel one end. This one is the front and it has the single scalloped notch. I'll match it up to the single scalloped notch here. That'll fit in place, so I'll peel the score tape there. And put that in place and let's check out our zigzag yes it works perfectly now we need to add the fences there are four fence pieces two long ones and two short ones this one didn't cut cleanly so I'm going to take care of that you start with the long piece you fold it in half on the dotted fold line in the center and then each half gets folded in on the next dotted score line. 
So all of the folds are going in the same direction and it folds, it makes kind of a diamond shape. Open it up again and apply eighth inch score tape to the very edge of the last picket on the inside. Do this to both ends. And repeat on the second fence. Take your garden, peel off one of the score tapes, the points go up and this lines up with the slit that you applied the tape to. It goes right over the tape. You want the bottom of the fences to be in a line. You turn it over, you peel the other end picket and you apply that right along the slit on the back side. The picket fence is larger than the garden and so it is spaced outside of the tulips. There is the picket fence on one end. We repeat the same thing on the other end. two end fences are in place. Now we'll put on the two center fences. These also get folded in half along the dotted score line. And on the inside, you're again to put an eighth inch strip of score tape from top to bottom on the edge of the last picket on both sides. Peel one piece of score tape off, align that with the picket fence right here, press in place, and repeat with the other end. And again, press in place. Turn it over and repeat on the back side. There we go, let's test it out. Does it fold flat? Yes, it does. And does it open up again? Very nice. Now it's time to address this sentiment that we're going to include on this springtime card. I've included pieces for doing Happy Easter, Happy Spring, or Happy Mother's Day. I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to do Happy Mother's Day with this one. There is the parts for doing an add-on card for each of them. The egg, you simply glue the egg together with the zigzags and glue on Happy Easter. The Mother's Day card, we will glue the pieces of that together. The white goes on the purple. The flower goes on the stem, and it all goes together. I have already inked the edges on these pink petals, so I don't need to do that now. The file came with all of the words, I cut them out a couple of times, and I am going to do Happy Mother's Day. That one is in several pieces, and after I took these off the mat, I stuck them to another mat to keep them all together, um, because I tend to lose things like dots for eyes, so they're all here organized. Happy Mother Day and the apostrophe S. I'm going to put them on kind of like that and leave the flower separate. For gluing these, I'm going to do use my Xyron sticker maker. I'm going to put these in 
front side up. You can see I wrote that on here because I always goof it up. And this will put adhesive onto the back nice and easily. You can use other adhesives, but I like this one for these kinds of pieces. Feel them in there. I'm pretty sure I'll lose the apostrophe if I stick it in there, so I'm going to do that with tweezers alone. I'm going to try the S. That might be too small, but where did it go? Okay, pull that off. And as it says, you've got to rub these Okay, peel the plastic off. Got to be a little careful with these. They are fragile. When I cut them, I cut them at a speed of one. And they cut really nicely. Happy. And I'm going to put just a dot of glue and then go get my apostrophe. And very carefully put that into place. There we go. Happy Mother's Day. While that's drying, I will put together the eggs so that you'll see how that goes together in case you're planning to do an Easter card. I would use this one for a spring card and just do happy spring. Spring is one of the words that's included. There we go. And this one will be happy Easter. I cut out multiple things just for this uh, tutorial. Easter. There we go. Now for either one, you will now take a length of ribbon and I could use purple or bright pink or green. I think I'll go with the green and take a piece about 10 inches long, cut it, loop it through the hole, through the end of the fence, easier said than done. There we go. Bring it up. Tie it in a knot. The last step is the optional sentiment if you'd like to put a ribbon banner in there. I included a number with the download including Happy Easter, Happy Mother's Day, and Happy Spring. These are printed on your regular printer and then cut out using an X-Acto blade. There are two little notches that also have to be cut out. I'm using the Happy Mother's Day one because I'm making the Mother's Day card. These are not just slits, they are a double slit. And you gotta take that piece out because they're going over quite a few thicknesses of cardstock. So you're making a little notch in them. Like so, it is going to stretch between this blue one, it'll go on there to this purple one over here, and I'm going to take it off now and I'm going to put a dab of glue on the outside of the notch, 
on both ends. And then I'm going to slide it back on now that I know where it goes. And I'm going to tap it just into place to hold it there. There we go. Like so. Happy Mother's Day. And then once it's glued in place, give it a few minutes to dry, fold the card, and that's how you'll get the crease in the correct place on the banner, like so. There we go. Now this will fold up. Take a piece of cardboard and slide it into a six by nine booklet envelope. Might do better with two pieces of cardboard, one on top and one on the bottom. But you can store it this way, you can give it to someone this way, and with extra postage and a second piece of cardboard, you can mail it this way as well. So, who are you going to send it to? Who are you wishing Happy Mother's Day, or Happy Spring, or Happy Easter to? Happy Spring, everyone and happy crafting. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.